Recently, while researching examples of flood geology, I heard about a particular fossilized tree in northern Tennessee. After several weeks of trying to track it down, I was finally able to visit the site. The side of a mountain had been blasted away to uncover a coal seam, and what was discovered there was a very well-preserved fossilized lycopod tree. This specimen was so pristine that in the 1970s, one issue of National Geographic featured photos of the tree in an article. After traveling up to the area on a rainy day, the remoteness of the location was apparent from the lack of civilization as we got closer to the site. Ruins of the old coal mining operation could be seen scattered along the hillside. A rough ride and a four-wheel drive up to the end of the road, and then a long hike over streams and through brambles brought us to the site. We're headed up to the top of the mountain uh, to one of the coal seams where the fossils are located. Uh, it's been a lot of rain in the area, so uh, it's sort of rough around here, a lot of water around us, but uh, we're on our way up. We'll, uh, we'll see what we find. We're near a coal seam. We'll be able to see the coal plus multiple hardened strata. And uh, you can see these fossil tree casts extending up through that. So uh, we've been hiking for a little ways now. It was raining a bit before when we started. It's uh, cleared up. We, uh, we're feeling good and we're almost there. There, perfectly preserved, was the massive fossil, and with it, many other fossilized examples of these trees. Although similar to the modern horsetail, these lycopod specimens are much larger than anything that currently exists. But there are a few things that make these very significant. Besides the excellent preservation, even down to the texture of the leaflet pods along the trunk, the first thing that stands out is the fact that these trees are fossilized in the upright position. The second and most significant feature is the fact that these trees can be seen extending through multiple layers of strata. Now, if a secular geologist saw the same layers of strata anywhere else, they would conclude that each layer was laid down slowly over time, taking several million years for what we see here to be laid down through gradual deposition, then lithified or turned to stone. But wait. How could a tree remain upright for millions of years while sediment slowly builds up around the trunk, preserving it from decay? There is only one way to explain what is seen at this site and other similar sites all around the world. Catastrophism. Even most atheistic geologists will admit that this has to be the case. A tree simply cannot stand upright for the amount of time suggested by evolutionary time frames. There was a catastrophic event that we read about in the biblical record, which would account for precisely what we find here in northern Tennessee. The great flood in Noah's day that would have uprooted vegetation, reshaped the continents, and buried a vast number of animals and plants extremely quickly underneath thousands of layers of sediment. In some cases, root structure can be found like this stigmaria, or root segment that I'm holding while in other specimens it appears as if the trees may have simply been snapped off by force, again fitting with the account of the fierce global deluge described in the book of Genesis. I'm David Reeves. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God. Sign up for our email updates at davidreeves.com to receive free content and videos. That's davidreeves.com. The mysteries of the universe unfold in a manner that is easily understood. Great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number.